Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is the ultimate Unity tutorial for beginners and welcome to episode 13. So in this tutorial we're going to take a look at a little bit more environmental design, so i.e. some more trees, bit of a path, uh, sorting out some fence around this little village we're building and we'll start looking at a particle system. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button, click the little bell icon as well to stay up to date with the rest of this series and everything else that I have on this channel. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So we've already pretty much dealt with how we can modify and change a terrain. And I, I think I've said it before, but as we go through this series, I would like to introduce more and more simple environmental designs as we go through, i.e. bringing in some more trees, creating a little wood, that kind of thing, along with new things that we learn throughout the series. So just to kind of recap, because it's been a while since we've dealt with terrain properly, and I'm just going to create a little path here. And Remember, we can always change our brush size and target strength and everything to kind of make things look a little bit more normalised, how you would expect it to appear. And ultimately, what this means is that even if we are quite not, not lazy, per se, with uh, what we're doing here, but we don't need to be exactly 100% on it, because at the end of the day, we can use something called post-processing to make things look better without too much effort. And post-processing is something that we will be getting into. So remember, you can also raise and lower terrain as well. Uh, you know, it's just simply a case of doing that. But don't forget that actually changing these settings is important because recently I have seen quite a lot of people get confused with the actual terrain itself and how it reacts to what they're using. Remember, the brush size and opacity is absolutely vital in what we do. And you can also, remember, if we select certain brush tools, you can hold down shift to delete and lower and raise certain objects. So for example, let's delete some of these trees right here because there is too many of them at this point. So if we select uh, this tree and let's take down brush size to about there, let's hold down shift and we can delete these right here. Same applies for the grass. So we just select that, we can just delete this grass here because we don't need it all over the place. And once again, we can always change and do whatever. So I think ultimately the goal in this tutorial is to add a little bit more uh, terrain here, like we've done, uh, add some particle system. So like kind of some mist or fog within our woods. And I think as well, we may start a little bit more uh, UI because we need the hood kind of working or you just UI in general, GUI. So let's take a look at particle systems. So I'm going to have a bit of a misty effect going on within this wood right here. Uh, and after that, we'll bring in some more trees to give it a bit more of an effect. So game object, and then let's go to effects and particle system. And straight away, you should see what looks a little bit crazy here. It just looks like some random orbs going up into the sky. Now this is the default particle system. We can play around with this quite extensively to see what we can come up with. Let's start with duration. So obviously the duration here determines how long it, uh, it spawns for. I think generally for the kind of thing we're going for here, we need this to be maybe a little bit longer. So change it to 10 and then also start lifetime to 10 as well. And we can see it lasting a little bit longer. So it kind of goes off into the sky more and more. <clears throat> Now, I'm going to tick pre-warm. What pre-warm is, is a way of actually starting the particle system before the game has even started. So it seems like it starts midway, so it kind of works seamlessly. And it's very handy, especially in a kind of fog or misty situation. So start speed, I'm going to have it much slower than five. Obviously, if this is high, you can see just how far this will go up into the sky. If it's very low, it's not going to go anywhere, but it obviously it lasts longer because our lifetime and duration has changed. So I'm going to have the start speed at about 0 0.5. Now at the moment it doesn't look very misty at all, does it? So start size, I'm going to increase this to probably about 5. And you can see now that we are starting to get a kind of mist start forming. So let's give it a kind of grey tint, as you would expect mist to be. So start color, click here, 
and let's change it to a little bit gray but the key to making it misty is changing the alpha right here if we have a very low alpha for example 10 you can see that it now is becoming more misty but because it's so clumped together because the radius and size and everything is relatively close together it looks a little bit odd so while we're on that topic let's change the emission and the shape of this particle system so we can close the color and let's go to emission right here and we can click on the word emission and it will bring down this section rate over time this basically means how much over the course of time so if we have this as 10 it's pretty standard if we have this as let's say 100 again you would see a lot more the reason it's gone all white again is because there's a lot more particles in the general area so they all kind of layer on top of each other and makes it very opaque rather than translucent that we have set in our alpha so to get around that we need to change our shape so if we click emission again we close that tab up click shape and you can see here our shape is currently set as cone now we want this general area to be misty so we can change shape to let's try sphere and we can see how it changes now rather than it's going upwards it's coming outwards and we can change this for example the radius to be much wider and now you can see the mist really looks like it's starting to form nicely. So the radius determines how far this mist will go out. So in this case, we have it set as 12.76. In fact, let's we round that to 15. So we have this general area here. Now at the same point, you could actually change the shape of this because I think it's entirely up to you how you want this to be. If we change it to box, for example, you can see it's not exactly the best looking mist that we can have in the case of hemisphere is the same sort of thing but it's going just in uh, the single direction rather than the full sphere direction uh, again the radius and the radius thickness do still apply as well as the sphere so for now i think we should probably stick to sphere and this is something obviously you can change or deal with so either sphere or hemisphere um so let's go with hemisphere anyway Let, let's just stick with that one as we go further down we have a couple more options but they're not entirely relevant especially with the type of particle system that we are creating here the only one which may be important is a randomized direction and we can set this as either zero or one if we set it to one it randomizes the direction of every particle as you would expect now to add on to this now if we go back up to emission our original rate over time was 100 now we could change this now to be 1000 it's not necessarily a good thing however because we're changing it to 1000 this now gives us the opportunity to actually increase the alpha color and we can see just how misty it can actually get within this certain section you'll also notice at this point the particles pop in and pop out so we need to change that pop in pop out as we saw right then it went a bit funny and we can do that by using size over lifetime so i'm going to close up shape close up emission and then go to size over lifetime right here now we need to click size over lifetime and then we can click the little radius button next to it it will activate this section and all of a sudden it looks like it will go a little bit crazy that's because if we click this bar right here we can see that the starting position is literally nothing but the finishing position is completely full so we kind of need to make that seamless uh, effect of fading in and then fading out as it ends its lifetime to do that we need to add a key so click anywhere within here along the red line and click add key and then you can drag this key up to the top round about here and then you can drag this key down here and you'll see how it fades in and fades out over time it's not necessarily the best form of doing things especially if uh, your emission rate is quite high so you may need to add in a separate key so right click again and add key and also drag this key up to the top so it kind of curves and then comes down and fades to nothing so to get this looking exactly right let's change our emission back to 100 and we should be able to see 
just how much of an impact this is having in the general area now. So if we change our start color once again, you could have this as quite dark, you could have it quite light, it's intelligent, you could even have it a red mist if you wanted to, if you're having a sort of kind of horror game. But I'm going to have my alpha down at 10 again. And I think I'm going to expand the radius of it as well. So let's have radius as 30, maybe. And now we're going to quickly press play and see how this looks in game. So if we go over to our little wooded area. Now it's not instantly uh, visible per se, the mist. However, if we stand still, we should be able to see mist particles here and there. The reason is basically we need to change certain objectives within this particle system now. Now it must be uh, noted here that if we make changes whilst in the game mode, they won't save. However, generally you'll be able to kind of work out what is a good sense of uh, the mist right here and then change it in scene mode. So what we could do is let's change the start size to 10. Let's also change the start color and the alpha, slide it up a little. And you can see just how much this is having an impact now. So it looks kind of creepy and misty. So ultimately, what I do think we could do with is we can still see the mist fading in and fading out. So let's go back into our scene view. And I'm going to actually close this down to probably 20. And let's try increasing our rate over time to 250. Let's increase the alpha so we can actually see what's going on. And let's click back on the particle system. Oop, and it's gone a little bit crazy there. Okay, so it's all about playing around with the particle system and finding the best course of action. We will be dealing with particle systems again within this series, probably quite soon actually, because we can use it for things like fire. But you can see what's going on here and the mist that's occurring throughout this little wooded area. And we will be doing fog as well. Again, fog is something which is quite handy within the game, but I think, again, it's all down to you. So I'm gonna give you the mechanics and things that you could use here to get it working. So I think I'm gonna bring this key a little bit closer to home right here, and this one here, so it doesn't look as odd, we could say. And let's actually now start building up this wood a little bit more. So let's go to our terrain assets and bring in these two trees. You can get these on the website, head over there, downloads and assets and the beginner series. Download them there under episode 13. So remember what we've done with the uh, terrain previously. We can just go to tree, click edit trees, add tree. And we just need to find the tree we're adding, drag and drop and add. And there we go. So here it's a case of basically setting the settings right here, tree height, let's have quite a range, and then we can just kind of place them here. So we've got like a little bit of a clearing in our wood right here, that's what I'm aiming for. And why not, let's add the other tree as well. So add tree, and tree 11, drag and drop. Click add, and let's have these ones in the background. So it's this tree. Uh, it's gonna be quite high, this tree. So let's change the size there. Tree density, a little bit higher. Brush size, a little bit lower. And let's place them at the back here. There we go. And yeah, that should do the trick. So now this whole area is kind of a little bit more not spooky per se, but a little bit more like you would expect to see in a wood. So, it's not too bad. Quite happy with that. So, next tutorial, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at that post-processing I've been talking about in this tutorial. Post-processing is a lot of fun to work with. And we'll also look at some ambient music as well. So, guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.